Here we go. I'm Natalie. And I'm Keith. And we're from Gibsonburg, Ohio. And we're Homestead, Homestead Homies. Homies. And you're watching Off Grid with, with Doug, Doug and Stacy. All right, so we're just getting some things caught up on the homestead because we were traveling so much. So today we're gonna install a gate. I'm gonna give you guys a tip in this video, maybe two, uh, if I can think of them. <laughs> and uh, we got our videos coming out about the raw food diet. And uh, some of the changes too, we'll talk about some of the changes that we've seen uh, with her right off the bat uh, from getting her uh, to switching her cold turkey right over to the raw food diet. So right now I'm gonna install this gate behind me. It's a 12 foot gate. Um, Give you some tips on that. We'll get it in, and uh, it's just stuff you do around the homestead. Let's do it. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is take our hardware off our gate. Uh, normally, when you get these farm gates, they're going to come with uh, some hinge pins. And just put them right here on the uh, on the gates. And um, so like this is a 12 foot gate, so I'll normally uh, go ahead and use these, it's not too bad. But anything longer than a 12 foot gate, I'll usually, uh, if they come with these type of pins, I'll go ahead and get long bolts and run them all the way through my post and then make sure that it's fi uh, fastened tightly because what'll happen is over time, um, these will start to bend and even pull out and you don't want that to happen. So. That's, that's one thing I'll do. Anything longer than about a 12 foot gate, uh, we have some 16 foot gates around here and all of them have the bolt running through and then uh, fastened very securely so there's no slippage and no chance of it pulling out. So one of the things you want to do is determine how high up you want your gate, okay? One of the reasons why you're putting up a gate is to keep things from coming in. It's not necessarily to keep things from going out, although that is a purpose. But the, pro the purpose of most homestead gates and fences and everything is to keep predators out so they don't attack your livestock. So you'll notice on farm gates when you go to the store, they're gonna have different types of them, right? There's like ones for cattle, there's ones for uh, like a sheep or something like that. So what we look for here at our homestead is the bars on the bottom, we want them to be very close to each other. So nothing can squeeze through there, a dog or something like that, can't squeeze through and get inside, the, you know, come through the gate. So that's one thing we look at. So, so once I figure out where I wanna put my hole, then I'm going to use my hand drill here, my off-grid hand drill from the 1800s. <laughs> and I'm going to drill out my hole here. Um, what you don't want to do is go too deep, right? So you want to make sure that you look at how uh, the pin is here and then figure out how far down it is. You can mark it if you wanted to. You could put some tape on there or you could uh, uh, put some paint or you could just kind of get a visual that you just want to go. I, I normally don't go all the way here to the end of the of the thing. I like to go a little short of it because that way uh, it'll really be biting in uh, when I put it in the post. Hey, where's my helper? Hey, hey, you. Hey, get over here. Come on. Come on, come, 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 come. All right, so I got my hole drilled in. Another thing you can do is like I have uh, some type of little grasses and sticks. You can put them in there, measure how deep it is, and then you can check that on your, on your bolt. You know, I'm just giving you guys a couple of ideas on how you can see how long uh, that is. So then I want to get this in here. And what I normally do is I'll get it going as far as I can with my hand. And then I have this crescent wrench right here with a hole in the end of it here, and that comes pretty handy. Um, I just use that to help turn it. 
it gives you a little a little torque so you can actually get it in there because you're lengthening the oh I got the horses are coming to check us out now Oh Smokey, he's always a troublemaker. Very inquisitive. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll get this uh, all the way fastened up. And once I get this fastened up, I can put the gate um, on this first one and then see where I want to put my second gate bolt into this post uh, so it'll hold the gate up. quality control but you got to wait till I'm done with the job before you can test it out all right now I'll grab the gate hang it on the first catch that's nice so nice yeah he really knows how to work it so what I noticed on the other side, and I'll go over this guy with you guys here in a little bit, is I noticed on the other side that it's a little short of reaching that side. So what you do is you back that bolt out a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And then that'll push the gate over. adjust it a little more that way to make sure that it's uh you know there's going to be a little room here but nothing's going to be able to squeeze through there but the other side i'm afraid is missing the mark on the post over there a little too much so i'm going to make sure i keep that fixed push this gate over towards that post and get it a little tighter up against there so what you're seeing here is it's a little tighter now but the way this post is, how it bends in like that, you know, it's just the, the way it is. So I still want to have that come over just a little bit more to squeeze this out, you know. Um, like I keep, the, I keep the sheep in here, so I don't want a lamb to be able to squeeze through there. And I don't want anything to squeeze in. So I'm going to push this over just a little bit more to where I can narrow this gap right here. It'll be a little wider right here, but they won't be able to get through here as much. And if it looks like it's gonna be a problem, I can always nail a little skinny piece of uh, two by four or something like that uh, to this post to help close that gap because of the way the natural form of this hedge post is that we use for a post here. All right, I got my second uh, pin marked. Pretty much right there. We'll make sure I keep it straight. And we'll get the old handy dandy tool and get her in there. So I have this pretty much on here. Uh, I'm going to show you guys a couple of things about adjusting the gate too. There's, there's, you know, I was explaining to you that the longer you leave this out, the more it pushes the whole gate that way. And then also, the more you tighten this back in once you have it where you want it, it'll actually lift the end of the gate up like this in case you have um, maybe some part over there where the corner is dragging on the ground. You could tweak this, pull this in just a little bit. It'll raise the end up. Also with this, the clamp here, um, I already loosened that so I could get on here. And 
And then you can also adjust the gate like this uh, by this clamp. So the more you turn it, it'll face, the top will go that way, and then you turn it back towards you, and then the gate will straighten up. So we want to get this in a position where the gate's straightened up. And I'm just using the eyeballs here. Um, it's pretty easy to see. I got my gate pretty straight. So I'm going to clamp this down here. Now I'm going to show you guys a trick that you have to do right before you get everything done to make sure you have a very secure gate. Alright, <clears throat> so as you can see, both of our pins are pointing straight up. That's what you don't want. Um, our horse could come right over, get his nose in here, and work that right up. Okay? So now that I have the um, gate exactly where I want it and it's straight and everything, what I'm going to do next is turn this pin down just a half a turn you just turn that pin down and then you put the gate back on and you put your uh, hinge right up in there so now what happens is if the horse or anything tries to push the gate up um, it won't just lift right off the hinges. That's another thing to think about. Like we have gates up at the front of our property. Um, make sure that if you have those kind of gates that are, you know, for private, uh, not privacy, but for security, that they are turned like this um, so they can't just lift them right off the hinges. Also, I want to show you guys this. Normally, the chain comes with a bolt that you put into the post, right? Well, I got out of there without double checking, so make sure when you get these gates that there's a bolt. They usually run a bolt through here and they have some rubber washers on it, so it's there. So right now, I just kind of had to use the ties that came with it and make sure that I, I wrapped it around my fence. And that's a total temporary setup right there because Smokey will be over here in no time at all and he'll start challenging this. So if, I, if, if, if he gets it loose one time, pretty much game over for me. So. This is just a temporary right now because I took the other fence down and I have to get it done. Also, when you when you do your latching, you want to latch like that, and then you want to move it back through here like that, and then that way they can't wiggle it loose. It makes a nice strong connection. Another thing I want to show you guys is how you plan ahead for things. So when I built the building over here, I knew that this was a 12-foot gate, so I made it to where this gate would close right up against my structure there because that's where I pin my sheep up when I want to move them out, when I'm uh, selling them or I want to give them, you know, do something to them or check their feet or anything like that. So I did that in advance uh, to where now I have a corral pin right behind my big building here. And then when I'm not using that, I just close the gate right here and lock it up. That's it, we got the gate in. Um, I got this video up for you today. You know, it's just stuff we do on the homestead. So when you guys want to live this lifestyle, it's stuff you're going to have to do even by yourself, like I do a lot of times, which I have no problem doing. And uh, pretty soon I got another project that I'm going to be building the dog house for the dogs. So hopefully you guys will like that. It's going to be kind of cool. And uh, we got something else going on Friday, so we'll see you then too. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we'll see you on the next one.